know better. I used to. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday Bible study. I'm waiting for the all clear. I think we're good uh, to get started. We'll open in some prayer here. So just a quick apology Sunday if you're watching um, streaming. We had some issues and it was mostly because of the Wi-Fi. Um, so we're sorting that out. Trying to make that a little stronger and working on our streaming programs. Let me just check in here. Are we good? Everything's streaming? We're good. So if you watched the message last week, it did do a little digitally kind of uh, stuff. Uh, I was watching the streaming. Um, can be a little frustrating, but that's technology. So we are working on that, and I think maybe we should see some improved um, quality and signal here. But we put up the backup message from last week. So you can watch both. If you go online, you can watch a sermon. Uh, and it has Tony with a different set of clothing on. And also in there, there's a link to the original stream. If you want to watch that and you can deal with the technical glitches, you can see the original message, which was a little longer. Hopefully, we won't have that issue anymore. But it is raining right now in southwest Florida, and that means we could lose Wi-Fi or power at any time, and that is what it is. So let's just uh, start in prayer. We have some prayer requests from the church. Um, you can get on our email list if you email us. Uh, through the website, I think you can just, just put it right in there. Uh, you will be a part of it. Good. Thank you. So it looks great, meaning the quality of the camera. <laughs> anyway, I just, I'm getting feedback in real time here. Uh, apparently, it's, it's coming through fine. So, yes, we are trying to improve things. All right, so let's just open in prayer uh, here. Uh, but, again, we take it seriously, so if you want to put your prayer requests in through the website, we'll put them in. We'll pray for you. Uh, you can just do first uh, name, last initial. Um, it's fine. So let's pray for Paul and Emma. Uh, Paul's fa uh, father passed away, so we just are praying for him, their family, bring them peace during this time and that loss. Uh, prayers for Richard uh, for employment. Uh, Ed, for his brother and his family, for the Lord to bring peace to his household. Um, and for Eddie's mom, who has cancer. Greg, healing uh, from surgery. Uh, again, Emma, prayers for her cousin, who has liver cancer. Uh, Charlene, prayers for wisdom, while grieving the loss of a friend. And for her son, for peace of mind. For her sister, for healing um, in her new living situation. Um, and just for all the struggles her friends are having, uh, but also that she's a light. And we praise you for her and what she's doing in those situations. Bruce, healing from cancer. Christina, for peace in that situation. Aiden, for healing. Those in recovery from addiction. Restoration of marriages. Those experiencing homelessness. And Freddie, to come to know God's love for him and come to Jesus. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this time, for this study, and for everyone who came here and everyone who can't come here. Uh, we have a lot of people traveling, and so we pray for traveling mercies there. Bring them back home safe to us. Uh, and all their situations and reasoning for going to these places, please, please bring uh, peace to that situation. Uh, be with us, unite us in your Holy Spirit in this time. And we ask this in Jesus' name. So uh, just a quick note about the prayer list. If um, there was a little bit of a delay, uh, because I was out last week, I usually try to go away in a fairly short stint. And so if, and if I'm not here on a Sunday, like, I'm here. Uh, but this was my longer vacation and so if we drop the ball on a couple things please have mercy on us uh, we'll get it back up and running uh, as fast as we can so bible study questions they're in the app c3 naples in your app store wherever it is that you get your apps hopefully the android store unlike tony johnson who gets it from the apple store that's not great but <laughs> all right so, but that's probably not what we're here to talk about. So, <laughs> the message that I did see Tony give, uh, regardless of the technical difficulties, it was great. So, I just, again, I want to thank him for it. So, I, I began with the attitude of good service. Tony took off on, like, the application of good service. So, really, I, I just wanted to go back to Philippians. Um, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible, uh, simply because while some of Paul's letters, for example, they deal with like a variety of different topics. Um, Philippians is more centered on Jesus. Not that anything else he does is not, or the Bible's not. It's just that 
central group of scriptures best uh, describes Jesus' nature, who he is, and what he did. And it's just, it's beautiful. It really is, really, it's worth committing them to memory. Uh, it's very beautiful. Philippians is a book of the Bible. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've read it. Uh, I once went through a season where I was reading it probably four times a day. You know, so that might have been for a year. You know, so it's a book of the Bible I pretty much can paraphrase. You know, um, and it's, it's really all about service. It really is. It, it gives us that attitude. That's why I started there. And we did chapters one and two, uh, just an overview. And then we started on that attitude. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. So there you go. Think, like in the Greek, it's just like generally, think like Jesus. Make your thoughts Jesus' thoughts. That's it. Be like him. But first, so think about it, before you can be like him, you need to think like him. Right? So we're not going to be able to have all of Jesus' thoughts, but at the same time, meaning think in the way of humility. So you know, get your thought process like that. Then you can go be like him. We did a series I don't know, a couple of years ago, Be Like Jesus, and it was a series on Philippians. We just did a chapter a week, and that was it. Um, so it's very important, not that it's more, again, more important than anything else, but you know, certain books will take you to certain thought processes. Philippians is the attitude of Christ. That's it. And that's what Paul's trying to say. You know, so this person has the attitude, you know, Timothy has the attitude of Christ. Epaphroditus has the attitude of Christ. Use us as examples. I, you know, he clearly has the attitude of Christ. Chapter one is like, I'd rather die and go home and be with the Lord. You know, but for your sakes, I'll stick around. You know? so, so Tony, I believe, what did he go to? Philippians 3. You know, so he extended Philippians a little bit. I think that's where he was. He was uh, Philippians 3. Three days in pastoral ministry is a very long time, so <laughs> I forget already. Uh, but he went over, he just extended Philippians a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. So, it just gives you an idea of, of where we're at. All right. So, let's take a look. Let me open my Bible up to Philippians. So, if you can't find it, right? General Electric Power Company. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So it's between Ephesians and Colossians. That's how you remember that. <laughs> I had a thing, Alicia probably, and Heather. Well, Heather chooses to forget a lot of what I say, and that's good. Um, but, <laughs> but Lisa and Doug probably remember. You remember when we were in the, we were in the building transition, and we were in the, we, we spent how long? Like a long. long time. Yeah, we were like changing buildings. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it was like nine months. So it was a long time. So it took a long time to switch buildings. It was a very frustrating process because our, this building didn't get harmed by Irma really, but the old building did. And we were like a, what would the word be, shelter during Irma. So we stayed there at the church through Irma. So Heather and Sophie and I were there. And we had it, the... Worship center was like a big gym, and then we had a traditional, you'd love it because it had stained glass. They had a, a traditional sanctuary. <laughs> they had a traditional sanctuary. So, you know, we had two, we were schizophrenic. We had two different worship centers. And so we, we housed everybody for the shelter uh, in the, the gym, which was the worship center. It has a kitchen, and it had um, gas, a gas stove, like professional gas stove. It was really nice. And so everything would run. <laughs> we thought we were good, but then all of a sudden, uh, the wind hit the building so hard that, like those one-ton or two-ton AC units, they were rolling around on the roof like dice. So all of a sudden, boom, 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 it tore the roof up, and then water started coming in. Like it was a roof just like this. Water started coming in, so we had ev I had everyone go in. So like we had, it's a gym, so you know the closets where they store all the heavy equipment? Everyone went into the closets until it went over, and then we had to get everyone from there into where we were worshiping. So we stayed in that center room because the sanctuary was like a waterfall, like the water was coming in. So anyway, it did so much damage that we had to do just this area. And it was like a you know, a fraction of the size of this in a lobby. And we did worship in there. So anyway, it was not at all like a worship service. You know, so it was really like a Bible study environment. So one day, you remember the lesson where I, I wrote down all the books of the Bible and I showed like how to rhythmically do it or like I made all the different words you remember that? That was funny. Yeah, I made a Word document for everybody. So if you want it, it's like a Bible, books of the Bible memorization thing. But like, it's like funny, like for, you know, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, right? Gel. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's just little things like that to help you remember. And eventually you won't need it. 
but there you go, General Electric Power Company. All the T books, all in a row. A lot of people don't know that. So 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, the books that begin with a T are all right there together. Okay. Yeah, okay. Five chapters, three chapters, six chapters, I know. Well, you can at least, so here's the thing, you know, you can say Thessalonians. That's amazing. That's pretty good. So a lot of people can't, they can't do that. And then we'll get to the whole, like, how many chapters are in each book thing. I mean, that's just another thing. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the question. So we're in Philippians. Uh, we're going to try to cover probably the first three chapters of the book. Now, keep in mind, I, I just did these questions. So I was trying to listen to Tony, and then it cut out. So I just, it's really not going to be the best reflection of his message, but we're doing the best we can. Um, okay. Where did Paul write the letter to the church in Philippi from? Heather's hand is from jail. From jail. He was in jail. It's not a good thing to be in jail, but that's where he was. What does Paul say about suffering? Money. Um, that you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering. How different is that? to the way you people preach today, right? I have the privilege of suffering. So uh, a note on that, like I think I mentioned this to you guys, I think after this series in three years, <laughs> I think I want to do like an early church father series. So I want to go through like, you know, Polycarp, Clement, like all the different, like so basically Clement is mentioned in, in, in the letter to the Philippians. He's mentioned there. Yeah, he's an early worker, right? So first Clement is, a lot of people consider it scripture, you know, but anyway, it didn't end up in the Bible. Um, but I, I want to go through and like explore the lives of some of these early church fathers and see what that attitude was. A little window into that, that's how they felt, the privilege of suffering. So when they talk about any of these early church people who got martyred, uh, they, they like talk about how they were glorified in their death. And so, you know, I've told you guys about Revelation, right? You know, the people who get beheaded or martyred for Jesus are the ones that get to experience the first resurrection and reign with him for a thousand years. So it was, you know, it, it's, it, it's, we don't think that way anymore. You know, but it's not as if you're looking like Paul in Damascus, the basket, you know, that kind of thing. Like, they're trying to get away. Like, don't, you know, they're not like, ooh, goody, you know, let me walk out in traffic. You know? you know, they're not trying to get themselves killed. But at the same time, if that happens, they're embracing it knowing that they're going to be rewarded by the Lord. That's what it is. It's not like we want to be suicidal. But at the same time, if we get persecuted, that's like a privilege because the idea is think like Jesus, be like Jesus. What happened to Jesus? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you want to emulate him, and the best way you could do that to prove your faith would be to take it all to the ultimate, the ultimate death, you know, death, the ultimate thing. And so it's very, very <laughs> modern church doesn't think that way at all. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Paul is, well, I'm just seeing if I'm going to blow the question. No. So, you know, but the, what Paul is essentially saying here is, like I said, you know, it, it's like I, I'd just rather die and be with Jesus. It's better. But think about it. You know, it's like what's better, heaven or this, you know? Of course heaven. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it, it, it's just that's the attitude. And we somehow tried to make this heaven. Although the Bible says there's a huge contrast between the world and, and, the, and heaven. It, it's the world is usually depicted as evil. You know what I mean? It's like, so somehow we've tried to make that a good thing. It's, and it's oil and water. So uh, it would be really nice. Like not to just, Paul's example is very good, of course. It's the ultimate example. But it, it's interesting. I've looked at it. I want to share it with you guys to look at how that uh, translated, how the next generation, like Clement, was hanging out with these guys, how they took that, how they translated it. And it's kind of shocking. It's pretty literal. They're like, we want to be like Paul. We want to be like Jesus. We, you know, we don't care about this world. You know, read Galatians. Like, I think I might use that scripture Sunday. He's like, because of the cross of Christ, I've lost interest in this world, and this world's lost interest in me. <laughs> it's there. You know, read Galatians all the way through. So... So Paul is opening, it's very important, Philippians 1, he's opening with his attitude. You know, he's putting his attitude there. He's saying, this, this, these are where my priorities are at. 
people. And guess what? Because I'm in prison, the prison guards are hearing the gospel. Cool. Think about that attitude, right? He's not like, oh, I'm in prison, the floors are cold and dirty. No, he's like, this is a great opportunity, guys. So, attitude. All right, so what verses make up uh, the poem in this letter? Lonnie's hand was up. Uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Exactly. So what is this poem, and I would say traditionally called? <laughs> yes, Sam. Carmen Christ. Carmen Christi. Carmen. So it's Portrait Latin. <laughs> yes. So I didn't want to come without an answer because I didn't hear Tony say it, and the week before I didn't hear you say it. I, I recited it. I know you recited it, but you didn't say the name. I didn't? No, uh-uh. Oh. I, I checked. I checked. I went uh, back. I'm getting some people. You're going to have to uh -huh. talk this one up. So I, I see nodding. And, and so I named it the Spartacus Christos. <laughs> Why? The slave Christ. You know, Spartacus the slave. Um. I think I like that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, when you were saying Carmen Christie, I thought that was the singer, you know, the Christian singer. Uh -huh. Oh, Carmen. Uh -huh. See, but that's outdated. It's like saying Michael W. Smith. Yeah. I don't know who he's here anymore. Yeah, you're getting that. Well, it's funny. I, I came into Christianity, mainstream Christianity, because I, I was raised Catholic. Uh, mainstream Christian, and then I went into like Taoism, I even, we were talking about the other day, I even explored Satanism, like everything, everything, I, I've read the Necronomicon, like all kinds of things, so I have experience with a lot of different worldviews, which is helpful now, you know, thank God I didn't die in the midst of it, but it's helpful now because when people talk to me about those things, I have a lot of knowledge, you know, I know where they're coming from and where to, the angles take, um, but <laughs> coming in fresh, like I didn't know who any of those people were. I was like, who? And they're like, oh man, you gotta see this. And I realized how much people worship some of the worship leaders. I was like, I don't really care about any of these guys. Jesus, Jesus is, yeah. So I still don't care. <laughs> like I went through a phase where I cared and I was like, this isn't great. Um, but you know, Christian music has gotten a lot better in the last, as, as a songwriter, it was bad for a while. <laughs> I just gotta say, it was pretty bad. <laughs> No good. Anyway, we'll leave that somewhere else. It's going to be way better in heaven. So good, good. That's the correct answer. So what does Paul say about how we should be serving? There's a lot of different ways there, Beth. We should serve like Christ. That's the synopsis. That's the... We need to serve. Like, that's the point of this whole thing. Make your attitude that of his who is obedient to the point of death on a cross. Did you have something? Go. Uh, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Verses what, 13, 14? Uh, this one is 2, 14. 3, and then verse 5. Be humble, thinking, thinking of others as better than yourself. Ah, okay. Go, go to thir 2, 13, and 14, right? It says something about without grumbling and complaining. Right? That's another one, right? Yeah, there you go. So yeah, he kicks off right before the Carmen Christie by saying, like, think of others as better than yourselves, right? Is that where that is? And the 12 should be um, uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, correct? Yes. And so and then it, he segues 13, 14 into do so and do so without grumbling and complaining. So don't complain. So they're all correct answers. <laughs> and essentially, yes. Jesus, did he complain? No. Right? So when he was insulted and slapped and all that other stuff, he didn't repay you know, evil with, with evil. He just took it. Who is Timothy? <laughs> yes, Lonnie. Uh, a fellow a slave of Jesus Christ with Paul. So Timothy? First and second Timothy, he wrote to him. So he's a disciple uh, in Ephesus. He, he leaves him in Ephesus, so he's like the equivalent of like an elder, like my job or something like that in Ephesus. Uh, so he's there, which is why we talked about the regional letters, like Colossians, which is why those people, Second Timothy especially, Colossians, Philemon, they're all a part of a group church. If you looked at a map, and Colossae is there, and Ephesus is there, and Laodicea is close, they're all a part of that. Fun fact, or fun fact. So if you look at the letter to Ephesians, the original manuscripts don't, don't have Ephesus in it. They don't say Ephesus, the original manuscripts. They're just a blank. And so, um, his name, oh, uh, Trophim, is it Trophim? I'll get it. So I, I always get these two uh, mixed up. 
Um, so I'll show you a little something here. It's kind of cool. So if you just go backwards one book, uh, Tychicus. Tychicus. So they say that Tychicus is sent with the letter to this region. And they say that what happened, so in Ephesus, if you look in your Bible on verse 1, you'll see a little asterisk there if it's a good translation. And that's because Paul would allow Tychicus, he's saying, take this letter to this region. And so if it's Ephesus, write in Ephesus. If it's Laodicea, write in Laodicea. Why Laodicea? Ah, in Colossians, they mention, so that's the letter after Philippians, the letter to the Laodiceans. We don't have it. And so most scholars will tell you that Ephesians is the letter to the Laodiceans that Paul is referencing. You see what I mean? So there, there's a time in history where they tried to come up with one, but it's, it was a fake. Uh, but it made it into some Bibles early on in Christianity. Uh, but they say that that's the letter because it's a regional letter. So he's, he has Tychicus, and he's like, go. And so if it's to Laodicea, write Laodicea. If it's Ephesus, write Ephesians. So kind of cool, right? So fun fact. I don't know why I got there, but, <laughs> but I did. Um, I can do that. Oh, Timothy. Yeah, right, because he's in Ephesus. So, so he... If you look at the <laughs> if you look at the end of second <laughs> second Timothy <laughs> chapter four, same group of people almost are mentioned as in Philemon, except who? You know it. He leaves Demas out because Demas deserted him. And by the time Second Timothy, a later letter, in Philemon, Demas is still a part of the crew, so Demas is mentioned in there, and so you see the same people are all in that region. So I like to group those letters as regional letters to that area on the map. I don't even know what it would be now, like Turkey or something. So that's Timothy. So we got all that out of it. So you know all about Timothy. Yeah, good. So that really helps me because I, I, was, I think a lot about the letter to Laodicea. So yeah, it's like, probably, we don't know. We don't know. It's sure. probably, well, there's letters we don't have, like 0 Corinthians, right? Because in 1 Corinthians yeah. 5, it says, in a letter I wrote to you, that's in 1. <laughs> so there's a, there's a 0 Corinthians, we don't have it. Uh, and there may be a letter to the Laodiceans, probably a lot of letters out there. Um, but a lot of scholars <clears throat> will say that it's probably Ephesians, because it's all to that, to that grouping or, or region of people. Uh, but Timothy, does anyone know where? And when t uh, Timothy was picked up, ooh, do you know when, when Paul met Timothy? So maybe around Acts 16. <laughs> if you go to Acts 16, and Timothy's mom, Eunice, I, that's a great name. It's a great name, Eunice. And you should name your kid Eunice. It's a great name. So Acts 16, so it's before he meets Lydia, who is a merchant of purple robes made with mollusk shells. I can do this all night. <laughs> Her husband is not. No, so she might be like a Proverbs 31 woman or like a Phoebe. So Acts 16, I think I'm in the right spot. So after the council in Jerusalem, Acts 15. I write it in Proverbs. There you go. So 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 so, so he's there. Lystra. Lystra. And a disciple named Timothy. And his mother was a Jewish believer, and his father was a Greek. Yeah. I mean, he was taught of by the was thought well of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. And Paul has him circumcised in deference to the Jews in the higher end. So if he'll do all things for the sake of the gospel, that's a pretty big ask. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and he was considered a son to Paul also. Well, what does Paul say about him? Oh, sorry. Well, what, what does he say about him? Well, that's like Peter and Mark, yeah. the son, but but, uh, and, and Titus is my true child in the common faith. Um, I can't remember whether it's Technos or Pythia. Titus. I can't remember which one he uses. But, so what did he say in chapter 2 about uh, Tim? 
one thing he says, I have no one else like him. Like him. So he puts him in, in a very high position, Emma. He also says, who genuinely cares about your welfare. Exactly. So what he's doing is he's kind of like using it. He like this guy. Trust this guy. He's got to put a stamp of approval on him. Uh, who is Epaphroditus? Uh, oh, Beth. I think Beth had the hand going up first. It like crept up. You know, it was like one of those like, is it, is, I'm not saying you're creepy. <laughs> hey, you should be reveling in this, CJ. I'm saying all kinds of things that you would get punished for. <laughs> like, this should be great. <laughs> Fellow soldier. Um, so Epaphroditus is the guy who delivers the gift to Paul in prison, then goes back and delivers the letter to them. He almost dies in the process. He gets so sick, he almost dies. Oh! It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lonnie. That's usually you. <laughs> So I, I blew it. Okay, that's my fault. It's my fault. It was very nice of you. All right, so I didn't read ahead. But what's interesting, uh, if you're reading the Greek, they, um, he, Paul calls him a messenger. And this is interesting. This is where Greek gets tricky because the word there is apostle. So if you're reading it in Greek, you will see He's my apostle. But this is where you need the context to translate things right. right? So you have maybe your capital A apostles, but there's no delineation. Some of these uh, transcripts are written in all capital letters, and I have a hard time with that. But um, there's no delineation. There's no like, you know, they have, in the original manuscripts, it doesn't look like that. And so it's hard to tell. Uh, so you have to know the context because apostle can mean a lot of things. So, like, if I say apostello, it means I send. That's just all that means. So you have to know who's speaking, the context, what's going on, to know whether it's talking about Paul, an apostle. Yes, he's saying messenger for Christ Jesus, right? But that's a title that he does put at the back end of his name, way at the back. Uh, very humble. But in Epaphroditus' case, it's probably a lower case. It's just a messenger. So just a little tidbit, you know, like uh, there's no real word for like there's evangelist, but there's no word for like min, uh, missionary. It's, there's, not, there's nothing like that. Apostle would be the closest thing, like someone who is sent. Uh, missionary, I, I wouldn't even know what that is. I wouldn't recognize it. Um, but it's apostle. They send people. So just a tidbit, you know, you know about Epaphroditus. If someone asks, like, there are other people in the Bible called apostles, but it doesn't mean that they have, you know, the, the rank of apostle, you know. It just means that he's a messenger. And so the word apostle shows up a lot more than you think it would in the Bible. Um, what does Paul warn about? This is good. This is going to be some good stuff. What does Paul warn about? Death. The dogs. <laughs> yeah, the dogs. Because they have a problem with domestic animals. Uh, they bite. So the false teachers, the false teachers. Uh, okay, so, well, you jumped a little, but that's okay. I did too. So why is that so important? People don't realize this. It's, it's called out a lot in the New Testament. And from Jesus, right? You know, he warns about that all the time. All the way through Paul's ministry, they were having big problems. And so what happened is you, you, know, you have the church, and of course people are looking to capitalize on it. And we see that in the Bible too, right? And so uh, there's a problem. You, know, you get these false teachers coming through the church, and they're either saying, ah, you need to become Jewish and get circumcised. That's the church's first big problem. Money. Uh, for in Timothy's case, you know, you can tell that there's obviously some kind of issue there. First Timothy five, where they're taking like advantage of like um, widows or single women, you know, and their weaknesses, um, and getting money from people. So, 
uh, it's, it's a big problem. And so if you really read through the letters a lot, it's like, wow, this really comes up again. And this is what Paul says. I have no problem telling you about this again. You know, I'm going to talk. So he's already like, we, we can go through this again because it's a big deal, right? Um, so we already said, what does these people, Paul say these people are? Dogs. What are Paul's credentials? So he gives his nationality, right? His citizenship, his tribe. Go ahead, Lonnie. Yeah, he's a member of the tribe of Benjamin. He's a real Hebrew, uh, a Pharisee, yeah. according to the strictest uh, uh, council of the law. And he was zealous, very zealous to persecute him. Yeah, so some translations will say blameless. He was blameless. So, so it's like it's like saying I'm not just born like this, raised like this, I act like this. You know, like I would, I, I would. So I, he's gonna use he's it. Gonna, he's gonna use everything. He's like it's not just that by blood, by by citizenship. Also, I'm zealous. Like you say, like I kill because of what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so he's laying out the all of his credentials. So he does this in Second Corinthians too, like the fool's boast, and he adds like all the sufferings, mm -hmm. right? So he does this when faced with false teachers a lot. Like, yeah. so these false teachers are obviously from, uh, you know, the Jewish persuasion, right? So he's like, no, you know, if they they think they're good, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, okay, I was circumcised the eighth day. I think he says that. Circumcised the eighth day. I'm, I'm, I'm a Hebrew, if there ever was one. Uh, you know, I'm from the tribe. This tribe that was a big deal. You know, what tribe you're from? Uh, just for context, you know, it's like Benjamin. You know, sorry, I'm trying to make this short. So, okay, the split, uh, you know, so Rehoboam and then Jeroboam in the north. And they split right after Solomon. So uh, the tribe of Judah, Jesus is from that, goes down south. The Levites kind of go with them too, because that's where the temple is. Benjamin's always associated with them, and sometimes you'll catch it. They'll throw it in. So Benjamin's one, Benjamin's one of those tribes that, that, that they came down uh, with them and did, like, the proper worship. So... It's kind of funny because you get this story about the Danites and all, or it just it's interesting after that and the Levite and the concubine and the tribe of Benjamin. But it's almost like a redemption from that. So, you know, you're thinking of these things like Paul's really attaching himself to uh, this clan. You know, this is like a redeeming factor for Paul. And then goes all the way through. And I don't just know the law. I'm a Pharisee. We're the strictest ones. We know it best. We know everything, right? So that's what he's doing. So... He lays it out there. Then what does he say about these credentials? Lonnie. It was worth doing because uh, God is so impious that he will try to control us. We are it does. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, <clears throat> Theodora wouldn't know. I'm, I, so, okay, a couple quick things. Missionary. So that you know, Theodora, I don't think, I don't think that, um, I don't recognize that as a New Testament word. So it, it may be like a lot of other words are, like church. Like there's, I can't remember what it is, but in modern Greek, I've seen the word for church that they don't use in the Bible. It's always like, you know, ecclesia. It's always the assembly. It's never the other word. So this may be a modern word. I'll look it up in Strong's Greek. But I don't recognize it, which doesn't mean anything because I don't know all the words. Uh, but what is it? Skivala? <laughs> I'm probably saying like a bad word. Am I saying the right? That's, I can read it, but it's like, looks to me like skivala like so it's understood in the biblical greek that it's like it's like saying dung you know it's like it's bad it's like a little bit worse than just garbage so i don't know what it is in a modern context uh, theodora might know but in a biblical context when we look at that word it's very forceful. It's not nice. <laughs> it's not, so he's saying, it'd be like me getting up here and saying, you know, whatever it was, right? Like, I was this, I was this, I was this, but it's all crap, you know, com compared to knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord. It's nothing. So you see what he does? He just throws it all away, and then now what are the false teachers left with? No C-R-A-P, they're left with nothing. So what they're bragging about is garbage. And it kind of reminds me of Peter. Uh, Peter, like, he uses uh, the proverb and adds, like, uh, I don't remember the verse, but it's, uh, he, like, a, a, as a dog, return, does the people return to sin? As a dog returns to its own vomit. 
And then he adds a thing about the pig returning to its own filth, which is not in the proverb. It's interesting. Um, but it's, it's like that idea, like a dog is going to eat its own filth. So he calls them dogs, and then their accomplishments are the filth they return to. Um, correct, she says. <laughs> correct. She could have said you were right. Uh, the, so the word's the same in modern. It's like saying C-R-A-P. Is it Skivala? Is that it? I can type it. <laughs> but I can't say it real good. <laughs> I can read it and type it. <laughs> okay, so she's saying it's the same. So it's kind of surprising. So you can see here, uh, Philippians is one of Paul's most loving letters. It really is. Like, there's the least amount of correction. It's just Yoda and Syntyche that get, like, kind of in trouble at the end of this letter. But Philippians, I want to say, next to First and Second Thessalonians, where they're suffering, it has probably the least amount of correction in it. It doesn't have a whole lot of correction. Usually Paul is correcting a lot. <laughs> you know, but here it's very little. So it's interesting that uh, he gets to these false teachers and he gets so wound up and forceful that it's like he's using some, you know, like Theodore is saying, it's, it's about the same amount. It would be like me getting up here and saying that and saying the C word. Like all those credentials are crap and those false teachers are dogs. Like imagine me saying that about another like pastor teaching, you know, that's crazy, you know, like it's, that, that's a lot, and that's what he does. He doesn't mind the forceful language. And we know that the Greek is melodramatic, so <laughs> Paul's going to be melodramatic. And he is there. He's very crazy there. Um, so, but where does Paul say our citizenship is? Emma? It's in heaven. It's in heaven. I was just doing this the other day, and it kind of made me laugh. I just want to see this because... Um, uh, yeah, see, he does say that, but I'm just, I caught something the other day, and I just, uh, I'm not going to be able to do it this fast. I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. He d okay, he does. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it, and I just can't, my eyes aren't. Do you have the verses? Yeah, 320 is we are citizens of heaven, but I, in the first chapter, he says it. Here we go. Uh, 127, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. <laughs> then in 320, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. So perspective, he's very repetitive on that point. I know Colossians 3 says that, you know, we should concentrate on that. So how should this, so here's more, more like of an application side where we're moving. Let's, let's go application and try to let this uh, sink in. So not that chapter 4 is not in, in, uh, uh, important. It's very important. But chapter 4 is like his closings. So he's going to uh, like give words of encouragement. He's going to kind of like encourage these two women who are fighting not to fight. So there you have, you know, a little bit. Um, he's going to give thanks for the gifts. You get Philippians 4.13, which is always taken out of context. Um, so for, it's very interesting. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But then 14 says, even so, you have done well to share with me in your present difficulty. And so I'll say this wrong, but it's like flipsy. It's uh, affliction. Uh, uh, tribulation, it gets translated as sometimes. Affliction, I think I said it on a Sunday. It's like getting crushed. And I think our modern way of thinking about it would probably be best to think of like the Salem Witch Trials or something. I think they did that there where they put stones, you know, large stones on top of the people until they got crushed and suffocated. So this is not like, uh, you've done well to share with me in this little problem. It's like, it's a crushing it's affliction, it's, 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 it's tribulation, it's, it's terrible, it's, it's horrible suffering. Um, so think about that before you post Philippians 4.13. It's way out of context. And so it's his final greeting. So th that's the summary of chapter 4. Um, but those verses, 4.13, should always be contextualized by chapters 1, 2, 3. I'd rather die and be with the Lord. Right? You're a citizen of heaven, not here. So don't use 413 to say, ah, oh, I can do all things, you know, like get a job, you know, get a car. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you can do all things to get yourself in there. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's what we're focused on. So it's another belittling kind of verse that I don't like because I'm a real fan of Philippians and the word of God and, and I take it seriously. So how should all this shape our perspective about current events? 
Like when we turn on the news, and this is just a discussion, you get, Wendy. Um, I look at it and are looking, I'm listening to the news or whatever, and I'm like, those poor people, <laughs> they don't know. There's so many that don't know. And I, you know, I'm like, yes, it makes life difficult. Yes, it's going to be suffering. Yes. An apple is five dollars or whatever, but it doesn't matter in the whole scheme of things because I know that I'm going home when I go home, I'm not going to be on earth, I'm going to heaven. So, all of the bickering and the, all of that is just and so, like, it doesn't bother me, I don't let it bother me because otherwise, I'll be either way over this way or way over. Especially with you know the political, you know season that we've been in, the COVID, you know the stuff is, you know we really have. I mean, you know, can be real. It's okay to talk about it. I've seen people I was very close to completely lose their minds, like completely, like com we were talking about it earlier, lose their minds, like just like you, someone who I used to know as a Christian, who is like no problem because you know a political party says it's okay now to slander everybody you know be dishonoring you know like just make up rumors but conspiracy theories that's huge right so it's like the age everything's a conspiracy theory now everything and it's like first of all who cares and second of all in a lot of these cases it's none of your business you know it's like they've even done it with the church like the, I'm hearing things I'm like what are you talking about you know but it spills into every area of their life and I'm like I don't even know what you're saying this isn't reality you know and it's just like with a lot of people I've just shut it off I'm like I cannot even talk to you right now because it's just uh, poison it's 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 just this poison you know there are a lot of cases where I'm like yeah I try my hardest to work it out with everybody but some people I just had to just you know Bible teaches that after a second and third warning reject a divisive person but we're not supposed to be like getting that riled up over politics like no way, like that's, that's because we're, we're not citizens here, so who cares? You know, honor, I'm gonna honor both sides. I don't care, like I kinda care who's president if I'm being honest, but, you know, but I ultimately don't care in the sense of honoring them. You know, and so like if it's the mayor of Naples, um, you know, Ed went and met with the mayor of Naples, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter whether he agrees with her political views. We're here as Christians to say, how can we bring Christ to the community? How can we honor you? How can we be better neighbors? Uh, how can we as a church serve you, regardless of what you believe? You know, but I, I, I couldn't believe it. I showed, I'm just speaking into this. I, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, it was a while ago. I, I, I caught myself, right? So there was this news story, and I've really stopped watching the news you know, only down to like 20 minutes or so a day, like I can just like, I turn it on, I'm like, I go for home, like, <laughs> I just go back down, I'm like, I can't do this. And really, it's crazy. But anyway, I was watching the news, and, and I'll just be really honest, because I played the video. I watched Joe Biden walk down like a flight of stairs for, out of an airplane, and he fell. And I went, huh. God smacked me right in the back of the head, and really said, what, then I'll just say it, what the hell is wrong with you? You just chuckled at an 80-year-old man falling down a flight of stairs. That's how bad this whole thing's got. And so I played the video, and some people chuckled, and I rebuked them. I was like, that is an 80-year-old man falling down a flight of stairs. If an 80-year-old man fell down these stairs and one of you laughed, I would rebuke you. And I said that. And I actually had someone who's not at this church anymore. Got up and walked out. Got up and walked out. I was like, good riddance, good riddance. Because that's what this is doing to us. This is, this is killing our humanity. And once you recognize that as a Christian, you have to turn it all off. Repent, repent, repent. Renounce your allegiance to any of this evil stuff that makes it okay to laugh at an 80-year-old man falling downstairs. That's never okay. Your enemy falls down the stairs. You pick him up. You bring him to an inn, right? You pass what Jesus said, right? You ban oil, you put the olive oil on his wounds, and you ban the Samaritan in that story. They were despised. They were half-breed dogs who rejected like most of the Word of God. They only believed in the Torah. Jesus says what? Bandage his wounds. 
the oil, right, wine, take and pay, and if he needs more, you know, time at the inn, I'll pay it. So what's the excuse? You know what I mean? There's no, so people say, well, he's, you know, this, or he did that, which is not all, it's conspiracy stuff. But he did all this stuff. Even if he did, Jesus says, serve him, even if he did. And so that's, I had a, a huge revelation because I was, I had my foot in a little bit. And I was like, no, no, no. You need to repent from that. Get out of that. If it's, it's not, it's fine. If you want to be a part of a political party and think a certain way or vote a certain way, awesome. Good for you. If you're blue sheep, I love you. Red sheep, I love you. I don't want to argue about it. But if it's making it okay for you to not love your enemy, you got to, you have to repent from it. You have to, you have to turn it off and disavow that. And I did. I don't, I'm, I'm not interested in any of it any longer because it, it, it caused me to think evil. That's not good. That's not good. Lonnie. Besides being a 80 year old man, he's also the king. He's the king Peter's talking about in 1 Peter 2. He's the authorities that Paul's talking about in Romans 13. You think about the progression, right? So we get to Romans 12. Therefore, be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to the world, but transform. So that, what's the point? You can love even your enemies. Be like Jesus, who didn't repay insult for insult. He didn't do anything back. Then he goes into it and he continues. It's 13, the same train of thought. Love the authorities. Honor the authorities. Pay your taxes. You know, but in, in First Peter, despite of the suffering, even if you're, you're being persecuted, it doesn't matter. Love them anyway. Nobody's being persecuted by Biden. Let's get this straight. Right? You're going to have to pay, like, a little bit more money in taxes. So you'll cheat on your taxes. You'll write the, off the kitchen sink, and you're not going to pay any money on it anyway. Stop it. You know what I mean? Like, well, you're not being burned a lot. Like, no one's going to arrest me for doing this today. <laughs> I'm fine, right? Let's, you know, but they act like they're about to be burned alive. And, you know, I was asked, you know, by one of the ringleaders in these groups, like, what are we going to do? I'm like, what do you mean, what are we going to do? And he's like, well, what are we going to do? I'm like, I don't know. Probably nothing, because nothing bad is really happening to us. But we get burned alive like the Christians did, you know, and then get to rise first with Jesus and reign with him for a thousand years. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know that, you know, but we live in such a cush country, especially city. Like, come on, let's just be real here today. I mean, like we're in Naples, guys. Like, you know, it's like we, we try to make, we try to make heaven here, you know, we got no problems. So, but just, just to think about, you know, it's, yeah, we're not being beheaded. And even that, Paul says that's a good thing. <laughs> so maybe, you know, honestly, maybe this is a bad thing, I think, sometimes. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay to have money. It's okay to engage in politics. It's okay to have, you know, beliefs about things that happen in the world. It, it's all okay until it makes you compromise your Christianity. When that happens, it's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. So... We know there are rich people. We've talked about this. There are rich people in the church. They're told to be very generous. You know, how can we have a church without rich people? And, you know, there'd be no building. But if it's compromising your Christianity, it needs, it needs to go. And so I realized that politics was compromising my Christianity. I was like, I'm out. I'm done. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm done. Done. And so if that's happening to you, it's got to go. It's got to go. Don't. You know, nothing should make you that angry or, you know, or treat people poorly and not love them, like, nothing. So, good thoughts. Thank you for making me rant. <laughs> uh, so, current events, you know, and, and, and additionally, so here's, here's, here's the other half of it, right, or the other part of it, right? How should this shape our perspective on what happens to us, you know? I can think about that all the time. It's kind of one of those, like, uh, you know, when I, when I was a kid, uh, they, they would say, like, you know, it was like the juke, you know, you, you'd hear it, uh, you know, uh, my dad would say, originally I think it had good intentions, but then it just was stupid. You know, you wouldn't finish your food? You know, finish the food on your plate. Think about all the starving kids in Africa. <laughs> so they would say, like, there was, like, the thing you'd get zinged with all the time, and you're like, mm, you know, which was like, no, that's, gorging ourselves is not <laughs> the right answer. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? And that's what you do. You just gorge yourself on a plate of too much American food. So anyway, <laughs> so I don't want it to be like that, right? You know, but we complain a lot. 
and we're not sitting in a jail cell, and we don't have friends being burned alive and dying left and right by, you know, like these kind of persecute. No, and I think about that a lot. I'm like, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, right, who was obedient to the point of death on a cross. Jesus says to us, prerequisites, deny yourself, pick up your cross, then you can follow me. And I'm like, wow. And so that's why I like, the, I use it as like a, like a daily, what's it, meditation. I recite the scriptures all the time. Because, you know, everybody you can be a pastor and you start getting a little too selfish and it's like, I recite my scriptures. So I go, I take a walk and I recite all my scriptures. I just remind myself, like, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus who are existing in the form of God, did not require, regard equality of God as something to be taken advantage of. Instead, he emptied himself, assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of a man like me, right? You know, it's like, and when he had taken on that form, he humbled himself, Gene, be humble, <laughs> in obedience to the point of death, even to death on a cross. That's not your world today, Gene. Go back to your nice house and relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's helpful. It's helpful. It is. You know, go back to your cushy life and relax. And even if you die, it's going to be in some nice air-conditioned hospital. Really? You know, and not in a jail cell. Not a rusty axe at the back of my neck, you know. So I'm, I'm trying not to use it like the, the juke or, you know, draw guilt, but I'm just sharing with you. This is what Paul is saying. This is what the Word of God is saying. He's like, get yourself an attitude adjustment. I'm in prison, people. Get yourself an attitude adjustment. We have a lot of first world problems here. A lot. So I was talking to a, a friend, a guy today about a missionary who's interesting because um, if someone, if you have anything, guys, in the midst of this, raise your hand. I'll shut up. Um, but it's interesting because his perspective is he, he is supporting this guy uh, in Brazil. I, I can't, you know, I recognize the name when they say it, but if, like, you look at Brazil, like, you flip the United States of America, and actually the toilets flush backwards there. <laughs> so it's in reverse. Yeah, like if you go south of the equator, the toilets go the other way. Now you know. You learn a lot at Bible studies. So I went out to Brazil. It's the first thing I noticed. Like, I was like, oh, I came out of the bathroom. like, guys, it went backwards. <laughs> I did. It's really weird. Yeah, the equator. So if you go south of the equator, it's, yeah, it goes whatever. I'm not a scientist. So I don't know why. So <laughs> anyway, but it does. But um, so like north Brazil, and I spent my time in Bahia, it's northern Brazil, Salvador Bahia. It's hot. Muito quente. <laughs> so what is it, what is it in, in Spanish? Caliente. So, yeah, it's muito quente. And, uh, caliente. Okay, so it's like that, really hot, because it's closer to the equator. And then the south is really cold. And they have people who look like me there, surprisingly, because another tidbit, the Germans after World War II, the Nazis evaded persecution by going to South Brazil. And so they have these big uh, German populations and they have blue eyes and stuff. But in the north, they don't look anything like me at all. And the Dutch were there first. The Dutch were there first. I get corrected. Anyway, and that's how Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu started. The Japanese colonies went there too. And so they brought jujitsu there and then the Brazilians made it better so, so anyway they did and so but in the north it's uh, it's really hot and that's where like the border of the Amazon is you know and it's really warm there and they have like these long rainy seasons and everything gets really flooded and so they can't do like the the traditional farming that you would do uh, so this is all a mission so they can't do the farm it gets flooded and they fish and stuff but with the rising water tables comes crocodiles and like literally the crocodiles are everywhere and they eat the kids. They come into the poor homes and eat the children. You're showing me pictures of like the dead crocodiles. They have to kill the crocodiles constantly. It's this big problem. And so what they're trying to do is keep them from having to go by the waters and do that. And so this guy does like uh, food boxes. So he puts like it's a month and you know, I've never lived like this, but you know, like it's, Emma probably know because it's like, it reminds me about like the oil you're talking about adding to the food. Like it's like, uh, like the flour, a lot of rice, oil, like things to make the food with so it lasts like a month. I can't fathom making food, but we can think of it like as Americans, like rice and pasta. You know, if you had those two things, you'd last. But these are all the ingredients to make those things and boxed uh, in a way that they don't go bad. And so like each box costs a certain amount of money and this guy's trying to get the boxes. And then with the boxes, the most important part is this is from Jesus. This is from Jesus. This is from Jesus. So it's just, you know, think about it. Like, I don't have those problems. 
You know, so this guy gave up everything. He made money, everything. He gave up everything and just decided to just do this. That's all I want to do. And so he's dealing with killing crocodiles, you know, bringing these people to food, dead children. Uh, just recently, like, 12-year-old girl got eaten up by a crocodile, died. Um, so, you know, perspective, right? Like, you know, this is easy, guys. This is really easy. So I'm looking into actually supporting him, too. Uh, I just have to find a little bit. I don't, we haven't vetted it yet, but it's an individual, not an organization. It's harder to do. Um, but perspective, right? You know, this is nice. They don't have AC there, you know, so it's different. And so let's, you know, make our attitude that of Jesus, right? So going through way worse things than we're going through. And then we won't complain about the coffee or something, right? <laughs> like what, whatever it is. But it is, it can be ridiculous, you know, like some of the things that, you know, and we joke, right? So like if you're here today, you're good. And we make jokes. That's funny. But I have had people come in and like, you know, ask for meetings over things like the coffee, uh, the volume of the music. We need a professional worship band. You know, the singer, you know, they're not, they're not good enough. You know, we need to hire singers, you know. Um, you know, just crazy things. And I'm just sitting there like, I just don't, being in the word a lot, I don't know where to begin sometimes with people. I'm just like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, let me take you to some place in Iraq. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, this is all amazing. Like, when I back up, and I look at it like from Paul, you think about, so if we go uh, to Acts 16 again, you have Paul and Silas, right? They're worshiping in jail. They're in jail, like sitting in shackles. So they're probably like this on the floor, probably like fecal matter and dirt everywhere, right? Because it's not like, hey, I have to go to the bathroom. They don't care. And so you're like this in shackles. That's got to hurt, right? And so they're chained, they say. They're chained up, and they're worshiping. And what's the problem? Like, I think this is awesome. Like, this is pretty amazing. Like, it might be, from a pastoral perspective, too much. It might be too much from a pastoral perspective. It might be too much. And that's how I think sometimes. So I'm like, yeah, you know, usually my response to that is, yeah, next week I think I'm just going to shut all the worship down. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> Ooh, you're getting, everyone has to put these like horrible, we'll have to get Deputy Johnson to see if we can get like, you know, like 60 pairs of handcuffs and just. Back in the chair like this. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that is not a bad idea. Handcuffs. Turn off the AC. Uh, We're going to turn off the AC and handcuff you all. Make seat. sure it's no one's first time in church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, we, which would be okay, so hand 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 hand. to each other. <laughs> and they were like shackled by to each other. <laughs> to each other. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would be like, uh, it would be like uh, what? Killing two words with one stone, like marriage counseling, therapy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, the people have the luxury of coming in here and saying some of these things to me. And I'm like, I like, don't know where to start. I just, I don't, it's, it's amazing. You know, and you just, you just get to the point where you're like, get out. Like you're saying, it's like, are you living in a different world in the sense that they are they and me the same. We are so, so we're bombarded by this world, right? We're letting it. But then it's like, but that doesn't make sense with the Bible. And I'm thinking, when when parents are not like, thinking in the future, right? Like, if even the parents are, are allowing the kids to be so exposed to the social media, it's like, it's not even that it's bad or wrong. They don't even know how to handle it, and they're becoming adults that don't know how to handle these things. No, there's another generation then. Yeah, and, and, and some people say, well, the newer generation, let's say younger, are waking up, but it's like waking up to some to what we're doing wrong, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're waking up to do the godly thing. Maybe like, like some things they're realizing, like money, Money can be evil if you don't use it good, right? But it's like, emotionally speaking, they are not strong. And even, and, and, and again, it's, it's like, we have to be more in the word. Not just, be, not even for salvation, it's for our sanity. Yes. <laughs> in a way, you know, it's like, it's our sanity. Yes. Yes. Because like, Billy just said, it's like, why is that so important? That's not important. Yeah. Our life is important, even our relationship with family, right? Like when, they, when you say Thanksgiving, people cannot have Thanksgiving together because of 
political oh. thing. It's like, why? How how we have let this? So even in the family, it's like you, like many things, right? Not just Christianity, but even the family. You're putting that more important. And I remember seeing seeing posts, even included in my in my family, right? That said, oh, we can be friends until you're talking about. We're not sharing civil rights, or you're talking about civil rights, and in my mind, it's like even civil rights could be tricky because it's like what you think is a civil right might not be what I'm thinking because you're putting you're putting um, some topics above everything. I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean. Like like even some topics, people want to want to say, well, I can't be your friend until you talk about this. Yeah, totally they, together. You know, then he said, well, what are we talking about? You're asking me that I respect you, but you cannot respect me? You know, things, things like that, but you keep seeing that it's because their faith, their hope, is placed in the wrong thing. And for us, that even when we have our hope in the right thing, we can still be derailed with stress when we deviate our our. our our, our eyes, right? Like, keep your eyes on Christ. When you, when you deviate your eyes from Christ, it's like, oh, what is going on? And we have to check ourselves every day. So put your eyes back on Christ. Put your eyes back on the ball. And it's like, terrible. You, like you say, you have to shut off many things. Yeah, you, we do. And so, so just as we, uh, I got to have to wrap up in a second. But, um, yes. And so, this is, you know, and a lot of people don't understand this. Um, it, scriptures say that the devil is the god of this world, lowercase g. So he's running things right now. And what, is, what does he want to do? Well, he wants to divide. He wants to, you're right, so he's going to use anything he can. So politics, he's like, awesome, you're right? He's going to use politics. He wants us to divide. He wants us to hate one another. He wants us to fight with one another. And it's just amazing. You, you can't have, you're right, like a civil discourse is what you're saying. Like, you can't just say, yeah, because like civil rights is going to go more into like racism and that kind of area, right? Whereas, uh, you know, like a civil discourse is I think what you're meaning, right? So okay, there's a little difference. So like, you know, uh, I would say unequivocally like uh, Christianity and racism are antithetical. They're, they're, you, know, you, you can't be a racist and say you're a Christian. It's impossible. You, you, you just can't do it. There's no longer Jew, Gentile, slave, or male, female, nothing. Like, if, you, you, if you're a racist, there's something evil inside you. That it's wrong. It's a, you, you can't. You should no longer. Once I became a Christian, uh, I lean that way. Because in New York, it's, it's bad. There are a lot of racists there. There's a lot of the cultural divide. Like, the Irish don't like the Italians, and the, and the you know, Hispanics don't like the black people. It's, it's very bad. And so you're just raised like that. But when I became a Christian, when, before I became a Christian, like, some of my best friends are, you know, uh, Cosmo from Brazil. He, he's he's African-American. So, <clears throat> you know, I've been friends with him before I was a Christian. But when I became a Christian, like, I even stopped joking about it. Like, I don't see, I stopped seeing him that way. I don't. I just see a human being. Like, I just love him, and that's it. So anyway, um, so that's where I will draw the line. Like, I don't deal with any racism in the church. Like, I cannot tolerate it um, uh, either anyway. But anyway, uh, you're right. Satan wants to come in and just divide us all. He wants us to get, get us riled up by the world, divide us all, get us arguing with one another, and, and he's done his, his work. That's it. And so we cannot fall for it. You know, and unfortunately, when people want to come in and do that in the church, it's like they get warned, I warn them a couple times, and if they're going to keep doing it, you have to, you, you need to go somewhere else because you can't let someone come in and, and, and make that okay. It's, it's never okay to have people causing divisions in the church. Even, you know, on secondary issues, I love you. You know what I mean? You believe the Lord's Supper is this way. I believe it's that. You believe in Jesus? Is he your Lord? Yes. I love you. That's great. You know what I mean? Like, we don't argue about those things. Like, meat sacrificed to idols in the early church. If someone thinks it's okay, great. If someone doesn't, great. You know, love one another. Just, just be in unity. So that's, you know, that's why Romans was written. It's why Ephesians was written. It's why the first four chapters of 1 Corinthians was written. Unity. That's what they're all about. In one word. That's a lot. It's a lot of scripture on unity. So we're supposed to be united in love and care for one another. With none of these things being more important than that. None of it. You know, so we should be able to have a civil discourse about anything and have the Christian maturity not to get angry about it. And if we're getting angry about it, check yourself. Like, where's that coming from? Because that's not from God. That's not from God. That's no good. 
Don't let the sun go down on your anger, right? So Ephesians 4. No good. All right. I love you all. <clears throat> all right. Um, it's easy because you're not my enemy, so <laughs> I really can't get any credit for that. Love you guys, too. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, let me pray. Lord, I thank you for this time, <clears throat> um, just the wonderful conversation, the unity in your Holy Spirit. Uh, your word says we need to be of one mind, and so that's the way I feel after this evening. Uh, what a relief uh, to be among God's children, God's chosen people here. Uh, but as we go out, strengthen us up, make us vehicles of your love, your grace, your mercy, always pointing people to Christ. Uh, that is the most important thing uh, that we do as we go out. But strengthen us, um, just give us your armor, or just equip us the helmet of salvation, that shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, <clears throat> so that uh, we can guard against the fiery arrows that come from the evil one. Be with us, protect us, clothe us in your righteousness. I ask this in Jesus' name.